Just a little quick tip here I want to want to throw out to you mathematicians here. Uh, I used to do a lot of boiler work and stuff. All my prints came to me. I don't know if my draftsmen hated us or what, but it, you know, they, it's always your responsibility as a, a person on the floor if you're fitting and fabricating by yourself. It's your responsibility to do the math. Okay. And one of the problems that we always came up with was we've got to change an angular dimension to a linear dimension. If you think about this for a second, uh, I've shown you this out here. Just imagine this being a giant shell. It's seven foot two inches in, di or in uh, radius, which makes it 14.4. That's a big old shell. Imagine that being out of 3 16 It's hollow, it's not solid. So my draftsman says, okay, here's your zero, 90, 180, and lay out things accordingly. You're putting ladders and beams and instruments and everything, but he, he's got something over here and he goes, okay, we got to put a, a pipe stub over here with a flange on it. And he's saying that, you know, he's referencing my 180 degree mark and he goes, you need to be 37 degrees away from that. And you're looking at it and you're going, huh, come on, how do I do that? It's not that hard, and, and you probably know how to do this, but I'm gonna walk you through it, it's pretty easy. We'll take, you know, what's, what's the formula for circumference? Well, it's pi times the diameter, okay? I've given you the radius. So we take this, multiply it by two, we have 14 foot, four inches. I'm gonna change that to whole inches so 14 times 12 is 168, plus the four, I have 172 inches. 172 inches times pi, everybody knows what pi is, 3.1416. May not have known what to do with it, but here we go. Uh, we're gonna take this and we're gonna get some great big number. That great big number happens to be 540.35 inches. That's how big it is all the way around this thing. See, to me, tech math problems are kind of like common sense. If I would have come up with one, some really small number, I know physically that's not possible. If I would have come up with some enormous number of a, a couple of thousand, I know that's not a couple of thousand inches around there. It's like common sense. So I've got 540 inches around this entire thing. What do I do with that? Well, remember I said we were trying to do something with degrees. How many degrees are there in a circle? We all know that there's 360. For those of you that didn't, you just learned something today. How about that? 360 degrees in a circle. I have inches and I have degrees. Well, I do this division here. Well, what's that gonna come up to? Well, how about we go with 1.5? Now, what are the units here? Well, that just happens to be inches per degree. Oh, cool. Inches per degree. I'm pretty much at the end of my problem here because all I have to do is multiply 1.5 times 37 degrees. The units cancel and I come up with this number of 55.5 inches, I can convert that to feet by dividing that by 12. I would get 4.62 feet. Yeah, and we could go ahead and lay this out. I need to say that that's four feet and let's see, that's four feet and seven plus inches, seven, probably about seven and, uh, looks like about seven and seven sixteenths of an inch. So, having said all that, um, I could come in here with a flat steel tape and I could very accurately know where my 180 degree mark is and I could come back off of this four feet seven and near a half and I could put my mark and do my layout and cut whatever I needed to cut and I could be pretty accurate. How else are you gonna do it? You're gonna have somebody standing out here we're in a theoretical center with a protractor and a string? I don't know. We, I mean, I always tried to be extremely accurate in my layout. Hey, I hope this helped. It was just one of those goofy things, but when you're a fabricator, 
it's not all about welding, you know. You have to do the math and you have to prep your own material and, and fit things up. So maybe this helped. I hope so. Thanks for watching.